All right, we received our flexible build plate. So the website I bought on said we needed a new frame for the Guider 2, because this is actually what comes with the Guider 2S, which is the new version. So it consists of a, a new uh, frame and then a, uh, sta a, fl a flexible steel plate and a magnetic sticker. So this sticks really well to this. So you can lay this down. And then when it's time to remove your print, you just lift this up and you can flex this. And supposedly, your pieces fall off. We'll see how that works. Uh, so I bought this plate, but it turns out, as we'll see in a second, that the Guider 2 that I got, I guess it's you know built recently, already has this plate. So this was an extra. So that's kind of disappointing, but uh, it's probably not worth it's only it's, I think it was 15 bucks. I don't think it's worth sending it back. It's more trouble than it's worth. So let's go over and look, get on the machine, and we'll see how this fits, and then we'll go ahead and install it. And then we'll work on bed leveling again, because now that we're changing this, we want to start over with that. All right, so here's the new plate. And if we look carefully, it's exactly the same size as the old plate. It has the same little bumps here. So let's see if the removable build plate fits. And it does fit. So it has these little three cutouts in the front that go over these three bumps. And in the back, it just fits into the, uh, <coughs> the place on the back there. So, All right, so our next job then is to remove this sticker, which unfortunately we haven't really used it very much. It's too bad, but let me go ahead and get the flexible build plate working. Compared to the Dreamer, this is a lot bigger surface area, so it's harder to remove things in the back. And I'm making a bunch of small pieces, so I have a flexible build plate. I can just take out, get the pieces off, put it back, and start printing again. It's going to work a lot better. So, for production reasons, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, replace this right away. So, underneath this is a glass plate, so we need to take this off, uh, heat up the print bed to 70 degrees C, which is what they recommend, and then uh, peel this off and then clean the glass super well. We use some isopropyl alcohol to make sure we got everything off. Then we install the magnetic sticker on top of that carefully and then we're off to the races so all right so let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and heat this up and we'll pull it off all right we're up to 70 degrees C which is pretty hot let's see if we can get this off without burning ourselves the trick is to get it started without uh, Let's try our pliers. These will go over slightly over the edge here, so let's see if I can lift it up and grab with the pliers. There we go. All right. Once you get it started, it's not that hard to keep going. Just gonna work on both corners. Work on two corners and pull toward the middle. It's like the glue's coming off pretty clean. That's helpful. Usually, in my experience, because I had this, is the uh, other Dreamer was the third one I had. The first time you take it off, a lot of the glue sticks, but after that, it's not that hard. This is glass, so it's not really sticking to the glass. And maybe a lot of residual, which is great. Now there's some residual there, but we can get that off. And then we'll uh, use some isopropyl alcohol to clean it off really well.
right, so we just have a few residual parts here. We're gonna usually have. We should. We'll turn off the uh, power now. So we'll stop heating the bed now that this is off. I think I've done before is you can use this to. You can use the. Uh, this will take off the residual, so the stick to the glue that's still on the uh, sticker. Try different sections. Let's see, stay sticky. All right, so we're done with this, and we'll put that aside, and then we'll get the isopropyl alcohol and clean and clean it off really nice, and then we'll put the magnetic sticker on. All right, the bed temp bed is down around 50 degrees C now, so we didn't let it cool all the way off, and we got some 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free cloth, aka uh, old part of an old T-shirt. So we're not going to pour the alcohol in here. We're going to put it on the uh, put it on the uh, lint-free cloth. Double this up, triple it up. So put some on here. Soak some in, and we'll just uh, swirl it on there. And this should evaporate really quickly because it's still 50 degrees C. So. I don't think it's really necessary from now on. I just kind of wanted to get started with a good um, connection because hopefully we're never going to take off the uh, magnetic sticker. So I'd like this to be a nice, nice clean uh, attachment. But uh, as far as replacing, replacing the stickers on this. Uh, Eventually, this has to be replaced on this flexible steel thing. So, to do that. Just need to make sure all the uh, glue is off. I don't think you have to use isopropyl alcohol. I don't think it's necessarily worth it. Okay. And then we'll take a dry section of this towel and wipe off any residual. All right. Now comes the tricky part. Pretty semi-tricky, anyway. So we got to. Um, Get this on here. So let's see. A little bit of play back and forth, and of course you want to make sure it's centered side to side. So um, let's see how this fits on there. So this wants to go back up against against those things, and then come down here. So yeah. Nope, it's stuck to it, obviously. So I think we want the gap in the back, at least most of the gap in the back. Because we want to be able to push this in and have it seat in there. If this is pushed all the way back, there's less, less uh, I can seat on. So let me get a nice, smooth, smooth connection. So we're going to try to start this a little ways back from the front here. So what we're going to do is peel off the front side. We're going to peel the whole thing off. That's a big mistake. We're going to peel off the front section. Just the front uh, area here. Just like this, and fold this over. Then you want to. Then you flay this on. It's not sticking yet. See. So we want to try to get this square as possible. So I usually tip it up like this. And we want a little bit of gap behind the bumps in front here. We want to make sure it's centered from side to side. That looks pretty good. We also want it to be straight. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's just to be able to stick to the glass plate and um, hold down hold down this without it sliding around. So that's all it really needs to do. It doesn't have to be perfectly on there, but it's nice to get it straight. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. You can peel this back and then find the end of it and start pulling out the end of it. See that like that? Pull this end out and then slowly push push this down as you go back. Take your time. You're only going to do this once, hopefully. So may as well take your time and get it right. You don't want any bubbles, obviously. 
No bumps or bubbles. So this uh, magnetic sticker is pretty thick, so it's it's easy to push down and not uh, get any uh, gaps or, or any bubbles or uh, ridges. So it's it's pretty easy to put on actually. Again, the trick is just put down the front section first and then slowly peel the backing off. And as you go, make sure it's nice and smooth. Press it down evenly out to the sides. We're almost done. All right. Well, that's good. All right, so then I usually use this to push down. This is kind of slick so it slides around nicely. Make sure all the corners are down and the edges just like that. All right that wasn't too hard so even though I didn't need this extra plate I'm glad I didn't need it because even though I bought it because uh, taking this off of this bracket is a big it, I mean, it's not, they have, there's a video how to do it, but it's a big, it's kind of a pain, I would say. So I'm glad we didn't have to do that. So now it just slides in. There we go. And it's really, it holds really well. So this isn't going to be sliding around at all. So. so we see it in the back, lay it down, and now we're good to go. All right, so now we're going to try bed leveling again. And I did find in the, there is something in the software to adjust how high the bed is. So we'll be testing that. All right, so we're up to temperature. Now we're going to do the bed leveling. But, um, in the quick start guide, they talk about using the automatic bed leveling, which we already showed. Uh, but they don't talk about adjusting the extruder. So let's look at that. We go to settings. Extruder calibration. So they, they, don't, they don't go over that, but this is how you adjust uh, the set, how far the sensor thinks. How, how far away from the print bed do you want the extruder? And that the sensor is actually point is actually far is some distance away from the end of the extruder. So when it touches, you can make an adjustment there. So it was too tight before, so we're going to fix that. Okay, so it's going to bring it up. It's going to zero everything out and, and bring the uh, bed up, and then it's going to put the extruder in the middle of the bed. We're going to use our white our index card like we like to do, and. Um, It'll, uh, it'll adjust, it'll make that adjustment. So you can see here it starts out at zero, and you can go plus or minus however much you need to. So, so before you stick the card in, you just, you just want to let it do its thing, then, then put the card in later, because otherwise you might interfere with the little sensor. So let the sensor come out and do its touch. All right, so now it's telling us to do something. So now, we put this, so there's a lot of gap there now. So you want to make the z-axis uh, plus, I think. Let's see. <laughs> we went up to about three and then it wasn't even touching it, so I think I need to go negative. You have to touch it, you have to push the touch screen one button, one point one at a time, which is okay, but it'd be nice if you could hold it down. It would, actually, that could cause a problem, never mind. It's starting to get closer now. All right, so we have some friction now, not too much. Let's see. Okay, so what, minus 1.7 is too little. Minus 1.8. 
Probably too little too. 1.9 is too much, so we're going to go with 1.8. Huh. Yeah, 1.9 is definitely too much, so we're going to try 1.8 and do our... our uh, so we, we ended up with negative 1.8. So I'll write that down somewhere. And uh, we'll, we'll try the bed leveling test again and see how it works. All right, so now it's going to have us go through the, through the leveling procedure, which is fine. Okay, so. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that, and uh, then we'll try the testing. All right, leveling is complete. Now we'll put the card in here. We did have to make some adjustments because, uh, yeah, this is too loose. All right, we we'll have to go with the 1.9. We're going to change that. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and change the uh, setting to 1.9. So settings, speed recalibration. Oh, so we set it to zero. All right. So this is going to take a while. I'm going to, I'm going to go with 1.9, then I'll do all those procedures again. I did it again. I have it at 1.9. That actually feels pretty good now. So, all right. So we'll say OK, and then we'll do the bed leveling. So I'll do the bed leveling, and then we'll I'll show you how it came out at the end. All right. So it's all done again. I have to make it slightly closer, which makes sense. Quarter turn was about 0 0.1 millimeters. So. Right, so that's nice friction now, I like that. Okay. So the thing to keep in mind, though is that when you change, like for example, I, I prefer these micro Swiss nozzles because I think they're better machined than the brass ones you get. So when you swap out your nozzle, you need to go through this again. So Because the, the tip of this is gonna be slightly different than that one. So this one is a lot pointier, I think. So when it comes time to swap this out, then I'm gonna be switching to this one off of redo it. But that's fine. All right, so now we're ready to do our test print and we'll see how it turns out our bed leveling test. All right, it's done. So uh, the center printed perfectly, the back corner is printed perfectly, the front front edge uh, didn't print the outline in the front. And uh, when it did the uh, fill in, it couldn't fill in all the way to the front. So it's possible that I didn't, the bed leveling wasn't quite right in the front. The other possibility is, is that this magnetic, uh, plate thingy is, um, you know, slightly t tilted up in the front. That's a possibility too. So, so I, don't, I don't know if this is going to work for this particular print, but... Alright, so these are coming off fine, as I expect. And, yeah, this, this got kind of... Uh, glued on to the plate. So I'm going to heat up the, the print bed again to 120 and scrape this off. So, All right, well, it's kind of an inauspicious start, but yeah, this is coming off okay. Peeling one level, one layer off of the print bed is usually pretty tough. If you have three layers at least, then you can, uh, it's much e it comes off much easier. So I mean, next time I do this test, I'll print three layers. Oh, yeah, this side's coming off. Let's see what happens if we flex this thing. Will it come off? With only one layer, I don't think it's going to, the flexing isn't going to do anything. All right, so I'll clean this up and then uh, we'll, we're going to, next thing we're going to do is we're going to print one of these uh, calibration cues. We're going to turn the power off in the middle of the print and see if it'll resume properly. That's supposed to be a feature of this printer, so we're going to test it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.